thank you for having me here. Like, it's really a pleasure. I've, I've been to like a lot of meetups and this is my first one here in Berlin. Uh, first of all, I need to say awesome presentation by Gatsby. It's the good thing is that it's totally in sync with Rollup, so we can develop components to use in Gatsby. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, so I will I will talk today like how can we develop reusable components with Babel and Rollup JS. First, who am I? What I'm doing here in Berlin? I'm here for actually today. I'm working as engineering lead in BCG Digital Ventures, and my main background like in the last five years. I'm working with like front-end development. I start with Backbone JS. I moved to Angular, then I moved to React, and here I am. Uh, I'm Brazilian. I'm here for two years already. Struggling with German still. So, <laughs> yes, cool. the The first question we could ask around reusable components: Why would I need to expose my components like publicly? So. Uh, Actually, just before we jump in, in this section, I'll just give you a background, like how did I really uh, went dive in these reusable components. Are we recording this too? Sorry. Yes. Let me confirm, but yes. One second. Yes, I am. I'm sorry. No yes. worries. Cool. Uh, so about the, the background, the context, in my previous company, we had like, we started with one front-end application, and then suddenly three months, we had like five front-end applications. And we decided to create one UI library to be reused among all the applications. So we, we found this problem, like how can we like easily expose components to another applications, right? And then after researching, one second, yes. Let's go before and like another reason. So first of all, is exactly what I just told, to be able to reuse our components between different applications, obviously, right? Second thing, to share configurations, also really important. Like I've seen a lot of companies, they create like components or projects that we share between like different front-end applications, right? And another really interesting approach that if you get the microservice approach to the front-end part, we can use like components as microservice. It's also really useful, Rollup roll will help you with that, right? Uh, Second question, what do we need to create like components in React? We need encapsulation and dependency. And how do we manage that? That question was like rise, let's say five, five six years ago. And the, the answer was like JavaScript modules, right? Before was, I don't know who, who here like start to be with jQuery, that kind of really hard part was really hard to create modules. And then they come up with the first approach was the revealing module pattern, I don't know, if any of you had contact with revealing module, what's up the first idea? You can remember something like, can you read it? It's, it's okay. I have some lights there, but yeah. Uh, so that basically was like a JavaScript variable. You have like public and private methods, for example, and then you can expose what you want to be public as like static accessible, just like this. So this was like the first approach to JavaScript modules. And then, uh, we came up with CommonJS, right? Was developed in 2009. Actually, I said six years, so it's around nine years yet. <laughs> uh, was created by one Mozilla engineer and initially was named like ServerJS, right? I tried to go a little bit fast, so it's, it's nice. In 2013, CommonJS was made obsolete and was uh, avoided by the Node.js developers because like the approach was not that good. And, but was CommonJS that started the concept of require, exports, and module, right? It started in CommonJS. So here, a simple example, we can just go quickly. So we start like we export a module, we create a, our function, then we reuse it. We can require a module there and reuse. Like simple like this. Uh, and then after CommonJS, we had some problems of asynchronous a loading. So they came up with AMD, right? because CommonJS was not asynchronous at all. Uh, so we can go directly to the example. I think all of you probably already seen. It's quite similar to what mm. Angular did in uh, Angular 1, right? So for example, uh, if you need some kind of modules uh, to reuse your module, you can like define and it will, that function will be executed just after that module was loaded, basically that, uh, in a non-blocking manner. That's important to say. Cool. And then after AMD, 
uh, ES 2015 came with like ES 15 modules and the fun is it's native JavaScript. That was the, be the best part, right? And, uh, and it was the good, the, also another good thing that was compatible with both synchronous and the synchronous approach. But as everything, it has like some drawbacks. It's still not implemented in all the browsers. So to use ES6 modules, we need to use Babel or any kind of transpiler, right? So here, a simple example about, about ES6 modules, right? So let's say we, we want to create a square component. We just use export function, and then we can import the component in our lib, and then we can just use it, right? So it's quite similar to what we're doing in React today, right? I will now explain what is Rollup.js, why should we use Rollup.js, right? So basically, Rollup.js is a module bundler for modern JavaScript libraries. I believe like 9% of you are now asking, why not Webpack, right? Because of course you can do JavaScript modules with Webpack, you can do the same. They are, both libraries are like developing a lot, they are growing a lot. And what is Webpack today? Mainly Webpack was created to be a bundler for web apps to solve the initial problems of code splitting and assets management. So how, what, can, what I usually want you like to think about it. I think both libraries, you can also create web apps with Rollup. It's totally possible. And you can create like libraries with Webpack. But the convention wisdom has been recently, like the, use Webpack for apps and Rollup for libraries, right? Cool. You are talking too much. Let's see some, some pieces of code, right? And first of all, I will do a quick example. I had some kind of create React app running, but maybe we'll skip it to to keep it really fast. First, we need to install Rollup, just an example, right? And this is just for my example here. Let's suppose in our company, we want to create a header component that we want to reuse among all the applications we have. So simple example here, right? It's just a normal React component, ES6. Cool. Uh, let's say this is our main repo. We need a main.js file that we'll just import and export this component. Basically that. I will show you all the, the repo later, but just to go quickly to, to the files. Uh, as we are using ES6 components, we need to install a Babel plugin to compile our components, right? So ba basically we install Babel Core, Babel CLI, Babel Preset Env, and Babel Preset React. Basically that. Cool. After we installed the Babel plugins, we need now to create our Babel config file. That is really important because I struggled a lot with this step and then I, I really remember because if you just use the preset env and react for Babel, it will compile as a module. It, you cannot compile as a module. You need to put modules files in this step. This is really important. I really, I really struggled with it in the beginning. Now, we need to, we finally install our Babel plugin for Rollup, right? Just node install dash D, Rollup plugin Babel, and finally our Rollup configuration. This is the most important part of the presentation today, just to show you how simple it is to, to create one Rollup project. So basically we have our input, that main.js file I just created, that is exporting my component, right? The output I want, so I'm not outputting any HTML, any CSS, just my component. Uh, in this output, I, I tell like the name of my component, the file. So I will I will put into this folder, right? It's really important that this file needs to match the the module inside the package.json, right? And then the format. You can choose here like ECMAScript. You can choose AMD. You can choose CommonJS. I will show it to you later. Uh, this external here is also really important. It it means that. I don't want Rollup to compile React inside my component because I am trusting that the applications that will use my component will have React as a dependency, right? Basically that. And here we just inform the Babel plugin. That's it. Sure. Sorry, I have a question. Sure, sure. Uh, so why is the main reusable? Because I would guess that it's just the output file is called main US. Yeah, that's name is like your your component's name. That it, it won't impact you the final result. The, just because I'm calling this project this project reusable components, and then I put reusable here. You can put anything you want. That's you see? the same thing that I have in my position, right? 
Yes, yes, yes. Actually not because in your package JSON, we will we'll, we'll publish to NPM, I will show you later, and then we, when you import, you use the same, not this one, see? Cool. Uh, yes, now we can already build our component. So we just call rollup-c, so it will compile. I will show you now, let me just see if, yes, and then we publish to NPM. So I don't want to spend a lot of time with this, but we could quickly go to our repo just to show how simple it is right now. So for example, uh, basically what I showed you here, we have our header component, right? Simple like this, our main.js, our rollup config here, you see? Uh, your, your question about, I, this is the name of my, my, my project, you see? I'm using like it's scope in the NPM to publish in my profile, right? Uh, in the end, like just with that command I typed, I have these dependencies. Uh, all the Bubble plugins here, the rollout plugin here, the same, right? And that's it. So we can quickly go to cool. So we are here, rollup dash C, and it's built. We can now check the what was compiled really quickly. Yes, so I compiled to ES. So you see that it was transpired to, I'm not using JSX anymore. So I can just reuse this component in my application. And let's do a quick test here. So for example, I can compile it to, let's say, CommonJS, right? Then I compile again. Yes, let's now check our list. Yeah, now it's CommonJS, you see, the old thing. Cool. Uh, if I remember correctly, the last slide, well, yeah, publish to NPM. So this is already published to NPM. So let's do it quick. Let me see if I have some stage files. Yes, I have. So it's dash. And I will just create a new version of my library, but the command to publish, uh, to publish my file will be the same if you're publishing for the first time, right? So let me just create a minor version here. Now I have version 1.4, and then I'm logged in with NPN already. So basically, I don't know if you know about this. If you have uh, organization in NPM and want to publish, you need to put this. Also took me some time. So now we are publishing the component. It takes some time, so yeah. So now I have this version available in my NPM account. Reusable components 1.4. Cool. Getting back here, yes, I was expecting to create a simple create React app like with you to show this component, but to save time, I have this app already running here. I believe that to, I would just do this. So we just call npx, create React app, and the name of the application, then we join the folder, and then we start the application and run it. So I already did it before to save some time, and let's, so is this test yet? I just did exactly what was there. Cool. This is a brand new Create React App application, right? So let's run it. One second. And then start. Yep. Ah, yeah, I was just showing you, like, this is my NPM package page. Before it was 1.3, right? Now it will be 1.4. Oh, I lost my session. Yes, 1.4 now. And let's see, yeah, this is our Create React app running, just npm install, npm start. And then let's see quickly how can we use our brand new component, right? So this is the app.js file inside Create React app. Now I would just, of course, I need to do npm install, right? npm install, I hope it doesn't take much time. Uh, dash D. So npm slash reusable components. Yep, it will be quick. Then while it downloads, let's go here. Now we just use import header from my lib. It's here already. Cool. And then let's see. Installed. Let's change this code here, for example. So 
I'm reusing a component, right? I'm just my header. Cool. And then let's see. Okay, now we start again. Cool. Here we are. This is our header component, right? Just for, I think we already ran out of time. I don't want to rush a lot. So, but this is like quite interesting uh, because one, one problem we really had there is like, imagine if you need to publish your component every time and you need to develop, it's really painful. So that is one really simple tip. How can we create your environment development, develop environment for this? So let me split my screen here. Let's go back to my, this is my component folder. Basically, what should we do? Now my Create React app is getting my component from NPM, right? So we just do inside my, my component application, I just call NPM link, just this. Should be really fast, yes. Let me copy the name. And now inside my application, the application that is using my component, I just type npm link and my component name. That's it. Now it's it's like sync linked to my component. Let's just do a quickie. So if you do here, uh, npm start here, right? Let's start our React application. Here, there's also an interesting command is like roll up dash C and dash dash watch. So we can watch for change. I'm building my yes. So we can just go now to our component header, right? So let's say react open source and then we save. I think it just changed. Yes. So now we have a proper development environment. So just to take it. So, uh, I think we have now, yeah, that was just it. Just remember npm link, inside the first folder you create the link and the other you refer to that link. That's it, hope you like it. <laughs> Sorry if I went a little bit, but yeah.